Wadding is the subject we're covering now, though it seems kind of pedestrian. It becomes a very important area of focus, and it also can become an area of creative mark making on your pieces. So you can see in these pictures um, on the, the lower right hand corner, you see a little bit of a gathering of, of artists making wadding, making the wads together. The first step is that we mix a kind of wet clay um, blend and then we um, wedge in sawdust and we wedge in sawdust and uh, rice hulls. And the finished product makes the, on the upper right hand corner, you can see those round circles. That's what they end up looking like after they've been painted with kiln wash. And we store them in the different shapes that we make in the boxes that you see in the upper left. Down below are just some of the many shapes that we have experimented with over time. And of particular note, uh, on the board that's to the right, you'll see three fish-shaped uh, wads which were used on a platter which was intended to become a fish platter for serving fish. So you can see just a, getting a hint of how wadding can be manipulated. Now what is wadding? Wadding is the clay-like material used as a release agent placed between everything, every piece and every element of the kiln and kiln furniture to prevent sticking. Without the wadding, the ash deposited during the firing would act as an adhesive and cause things to stick together. Wadding is formulated so it will be strong enough to hold together during the firing and then crumble when the pieces are unloaded. There are many popular recipes. In Japan, a pre-mixed tool clay is available commercially, a mix of silica sand and grog with just enough fire clay to hold it together that is ideal for wadding. So here's a picture of looking into the kiln during a loading, and you can see if you follow the arrow, arrows here, these are some tripod uh, wadding shapes that we find very, very useful uh, in the firing. You can see them uh, under the T-bowl shapes, and you can also see that the wads are used between the bricks and the shelves. Here you can see wads are used for the draw rings, which are um, the testing circles that we use to pull out and see how the firing is progressing, how much ash has built up. Here is a right angle wad shape that is being used to hold this platter in place and a, a kind of a train track design to hold it down at the bottom. And here you can see that the wadding material is also used to hold the cones in place. So you can see that the material is, it's, its real advantage is that it can be mixed up green um, and there's so much particulate in it of, of sawdust and rice hull that it dries very quickly and doesn't have a risk of sputtering or shattering. Here what you see is a teapot um, where the lid is wadded, and that's something that you have to remember. Everything that touches needs to be wadded, in this case, the teapot lid. Another special technique that you can see there is that a little bit of broken uh, glass is put around the knob of the lid. Wadding that is mixed and used wet is called dango in Japanese, a word that means cake. And wet wadding, when it's used, has a real advantage in that it, it's really stable. And for uh, precarious pieces or sometimes for tumble stacking, you really want to use wet wadding. Uh, we also use wet wadding for the bricks and shelves. Um, so for precarious pieces, it can really hold. But decoratively, wadding that is wet it conforms exactly to the surface it's pushed on, and so it doesn't allow any um, vapors from the, the flame to get in and color the clay. So the clay comes out very light colored. Wadding that is mixed, shaped into forms and allowed to dry is called simbe, which is the Japanese word for rice crackers. And simbe has the advantage of where it touches the the piece it, it touches in two or three spots but it does it allows a gap 
for the vapor to um, to get in the, for the the hero the uh, vaporized chemistry of the ash that's carried on the flame to actually get in to the surface and warm up the clay surface a bit, um, give it a bit of color. And you can see here some different, here are three different size shapes of track here. Here's a large um, uh, five-pointed uh, stand for larger pieces. These are right angle shapes that are very useful. And uh, these are T shapes that are also have their moments. And these little, we probably use the most of these little tiny round discs. And here's another collection of different shapes that you can see uh, that we are, have made in our drying. Our Simbe mix starts out with a mix of four parts of fire clay, one part ball clay, and two parts of alumina. These materials are mixed wet, and then we add a 50-50 mix of sawdust and rice holes. We wedge it in enough so the mix just holds together when squeezed into shapes. The mix is then shaped into all the desired forms and allowed to dry. In some parts of the Rosinante sidecar kiln, right up near the firebox, temperatures get so ash and the ash buildup is so very high that it necessitates you have to use solid clay wads. A regular wadding material would absorb the high quantity of ash and form into just a large chunk of glass that would stick to the ceramics. So here's an example of those uh, wads made from uh, clay. And these pieces are, um, when, they're, when they're first formed, they have very sharp points on each of these tripod points, and that allows us to break them off with very little impact on the piece, just a little dot left on the piece that can be sanded or ground down. Here's some other examples. And here's one of those clay pieces uh, used on a uh, vase jar and here's what it looks like when it's broken off. You see there's going to be a little work uh, finishing those spots but um, but the, you can also see the tremendous amount of ash that's involved in these pieces. So there are other things we can do. This is one that uh, is a particular favorite of mine. It turns out that silica stone or quartz doesn't melt. It uh, it melts at 3100 degrees. Everything melts, but that's such a high temperature that it won't melt in our kilns. So it becomes an ideal form of a tripod and you can push it into clay forms like this and then bisque fire them and use them uh, in the, uh, for, for wadding your pieces. Here's an interesting idea. Uh, the artist Tree Tran, when he was a student with us, uh, formed a big uh, kind of circular uh, wad shape that he then loaded his piece on and it was fired on that wad, face down on that wad on the side like this and this was the result. Here I did this just to demonstrate uh, the idea of shaped wads. So we have a triangle and a square and a circle. You can also hear some more shapes. Again, uh, kind of a circular shape and then a uh, crescent shape and then a sort of uh, amorphous amoeba-like shape. And then, um, then you can start playing with the number of wads. Here's two wads, three wads, and this is an example of um, some wads on large uh, vases and these vases are actually used in the firing as to create to build a fire grate uh, upon which the um, the wood is thrown through the side stoke uh, it, these vases allow air to get underneath the wood and you can also see that a wet wad wet wad was used for these because they're going to be hit a lot with wood so they needed to be very stable and because it's a wet wad, you can see the light color of the clay. Whereas this is an example of a, of a simbe, and you can see how much color, that beautiful uh, uh, carmine red, um, beautiful color from uh, a simbe wad. And that is the end of that.